You know, I know things haven't gone our way the first nine weeks. I know there's been a lot of crazy things going on from all the injuries, guys underperforming, dropping game-winning touchdowns, all sorts of things. Orlando Skandrick talking about the locker room, anonymous sources. It has been a really crazy first nine weeks of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles. But despite all of that, but despite all of that, this team still controls its own destiny. And I have no doubt in my mind that it's all going to come down to that Week 16 matchup versus some stinking Cowboys. 18th pick in the NFL draft. The d hey, make us lunch. We're hungry. Dallas still stinks. You're by the way, King Ding back here, and I hope everybody's having a great day, a great football Friday. I hope you guys are doing well. Me, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually home today, so I've just been cleaning out my garage, getting all my Christmas stuff ready because my kids have been torturing me like crazy. So I'm thinking. I'm going to wind up losing this battle very shortly. I might as well have everything ready to go. So that's what I've been pretty much doing. You know, I've been thinking about the Eagles today. I, I re-watched the last game the Eagles played versus the Bears. I've watched it a few a few times, you know. And, and there are some things going forward I'm very excited about with this team. There's some things that I'm very worried about with this team. And, you know, when you kind of take a step back and you look at the season as a whole. I mean, I definitely didn't think we would be 5-4. I didn't think we would struggle this much. I didn't think we would be this injured. Um, I, I didn't think we were going to have more anonymous sources and Orlando Scandrick. There's just so many things that you can't even think of, you know, that happens in a season when you're trying to talk about it leading up to it. And it seems like this season is just flying by. Um, but there are a few things that, that I think are, are very positive about this team going forward that I'm very excited about towards, you know, the rest of the games that we have to play. Um, one of those things is Carson Wentz. Now, I know that a lot of people want to give him crap, blame him for everything, but to me, the North Dakota Assassin has been a very bright spot on this Eagles team because, frankly, he doesn't have the weapons to work with. He doesn't have the weapons. And some people say, well, a good quarterback, an elite quarterback, and Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, they make those players better. And I will say this. The players like Mac Hollins are so bad that you're seeing them at their best. Carson has made them better. They're just not that good. <laughs> They're just not that good. Okay? So I, I think Carson has been a, a bright spot. And, and, and he's still healthy, knock on wood. And, um, you know, I, I was, I've been very impressed with him. Um, not so much maybe passing numbers or this or that. But in, in situations in which he was very heavily criticized last year for, um, not being clutch, right? That was the big thing last year with Carson Wentz. Well, he's not clutch. Look at the Carolina game. Look what he did when he missed Wendell Smallwood down at the goal and he tried to force it. Um, you know, that was something that, that people went at him about. And if you look at this year and, and, and just reviewing this season, you go back to that uh, Washington game, right? First week of the season. Uh, you did have Deshaun Jackson, but you were down 17 nothing. He didn't panic. He lit the Redskins up, and that was it. Uh, week two, he played a really bad first half versus the Atlanta Falcons. No excuses. He, he was not good. But he got it going on. He gave us the lead late in the fourth quarter. The Atlanta Falcons then retook the lead, and he basically threw a game-winning touchdown that was dropped. Okay? So that was a situation in which I look at Carson and go, hey, that was a clutch situation that he should have delivered. He can't, he can't do anymore. Same thing with Detroit the next week. Um, then when you fast forward to like uh, the Buffalo game and you fast forward to uh, the Chicago game, uh, people don't really give him enough credit for those fourth quarter drives that he had. I mean, in my opinion, you know, you could talk about clutch guys and, and guys being clutch at the right time. Uh, what we saw versus Chicago and what we saw versus Buffalo, two good defenses, 
Carson Wentz came up clutch and he came up huge. After Buffalo had scored a touchdown to, to make it close, Carson went on a long drive, killing a lot of the clock. I think the Eagles wind up scoring and that pretty much sealed the victory. Last week, as Chicago was battling back and had all the momentum in the world, okay, the Eagles come, come out in the field, eight minutes left to go, they get the ball, and they basically take all the time off the clock. There was 25 seconds left when the Bears got the ball, well, they should have got the ball back. They fumbled the, the kickoff, and it wound up being recovered by the Eagles. But my point is this. That is a clutch moment. That is a clutch moment where you're putting tremendous amount of pressure on your quarterback to keep the chains moving, to not give the ball back. And you got to remember this, too. There was no Deshaun Jackson last week. There was no Alshon Jeffrey. At one point, he had both those guys out, and he made three huge plays on third down to give the Eagles uh, first downs to keep the clock moving. And and those are the kind of things that I look at and I say, yeah, this kid is a real deal. He's got it. He's got it. He's just got to get more weapons. they got to adjust this offense in the future to fit more his style, a vertical style. Um, so an example that has been used before, and I think it's a great example, is the Eagles are like the Alex Smith Kansas City Chiefs, okay? Um, and basically, uh, that fit Alex Smith, even fit Nick Foles, but it doesn't really fit Carson Wentz that great. And what they need to do is become do what the Chiefs did. When Alex Smith left and Mahomes came in, they became a more vertical passing team. That's what the Eagles are going to have to do in the future. But uh, I've been very impressed with uh, Carson Wentz this year. Um, some other guys that I think have made a huge impact on this team and are having really good years are the two rookies, Andre Dillard and Miles Sanders. Now, uh, I thought Andre Dillard had a great game last week to go up the Bears and play the way he did. Um, you know, Bears were moving guys around at times he was blocking Cleo Mack and, and, you know, they were just moving guys around. And he, by all accounts, he held up. He played pretty good. Me, personally, I think that he's won the starting left tackle job and you shouldn't even take him out. Uh, Doug Peterson said Peters will start when he's ready. I wouldn't do it. I would just let Dillard play the rest of the year. But the experience he's getting right now, the way he's played, I think has been a huge positive for this team. Uh, another guy is Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders is a stud. He is a stud. And yes, he struggled early, especially, you know, hitting that hole. And it, it's still something he's got to work on. He's trying to bounce everything outside. Trying to bounce everything outside. Well, you've seen over the last few weeks that, that he's starting to hit that hole a lot more, a, a lot quicker. And you see how fast he gets through it. Uh, I think Miles Sanders is going to be very much like an Alvin Kamara type running back for the Eagles. A guy that can do everything in the running game and the passing game. And to see him develop um, over these next few years is going to be really fun to watch. Uh, Miles Sanders, to me, has an outside shot. And it's not he still has an outside shot at maybe uh, a rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year. It's going to be hard, but... Miles Sanders, I've been very impressed with. And, and, and another guy that I'm very impressed with is Jordan Howard. I mean, I knew Jordan Howard was a pretty decent running back, but to see the impact he made on this team, and let's face it, when he's running the ball well and the Eagles are running the ball well, this whole offense looks, this whole offense is different. And Jordan Howard is a really, really important uh, person in this offense. And I think that the Eagles need to make it a priority to go out and to make sure that they re-sign Miles San I mean, re-sign Jordan Howard, excuse me, and make sure that he's there. I want, for the next few years, I want to have Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. I want that one-two combo because I think it's fantastic and I think it's very hard to, to defend. Just imagine when you get wide receivers out there that could actually uh, go vertical. With those two running backs, whoo! I mean, look, you saw last week, even in the one series Deshaun Jackson played, you saw two safeties back. I mean, he just commanded that kind of respect. And and when you have a guy like that out there like Deshaun, it's going to even open up things in the middle for those running backs. But I would say Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Andre Dillard, I've been very impressed with them. Carson Wentz, I think Brandon Graham is having a, a great year. I think he's having a career year. Uh, I think Brandon Graham has been fantastic. Now, the Eagles are also going to be getting healthy. You see it with our secondary. Guys are slowly starting to come back. Unfortunately, not Deshaun Jackson. 
But uh, there's a lot of things I think that we can be positive and there's a lot of things that this team can actually build on going forward. So those are some of the positives that have stood out to me uh, for the Eagles this season. Now, I'm sure I'm missing things here or there, but, you know, for me, that's what has stood out to me. And I know it hasn't been all uh, rainbows and lollipops and all those good things. It's been a very frustrating, very aggravating, perplexing season in a lot of ways. Uh, it, it's just been crazy. And, and look, I can go off and tell you my number one disappointment is the wide receiving position, which it is. I could talk about how Nelson has blown uh, game-winning opportunities, how Mac Hollins, or as I call Mac Stinkins, stinks, and you know we can we can talk about that. We we we've done it so much. I mean, we've talked about it. I've been disappointed that how he didn't pull the trigger to get better. I mean, we know that they're going to blow this team up at the end of the year, or at least. There's going to be a lot of change. It would be an overhaul, okay? Uh, and you would think, well, this is your last hurrah. Why not go out and get a guy for basically nothing like Josh Gordon? Um, A.B. sitting out there. They don't want to touch him, which I, I think is crazy. I would sign him in a second. I think we should. Um, but they don't. They go and they get Jordan Matthews. I'm hoping, okay, well, at least maybe they'll add J.J. Nelson too so they have some speed on the outside. They don't. So, you know, I've been disappointed with, with Howie in that regard. I would love to know what he's thinking because I, I, I don't get it. Um, you know, th there's all those kind of things and issues that we've been talking about all year. I, I think the defense was banged up earlier in the year. I think they're getting healthy. I think they're going to be all right. I, I, I'm telling you, I have some hope in the defense. Fletcher Cox is coming around. He looks like he's getting healthy. Uh, TJ Edwards is playing. I think he's been okay. The secondary is getting better. So I, I think that there's hope there. Um, you know, offensively, I, that's where I've been the most disappointed. And, and like I said, we can't talk about trade this guy or go get this guy because it's not going to happen. They're not doing it. I would love to get Antonio Brown. I hope that they do that, but it doesn't look like they're doing it. So, oh man, my eyes itch. Sorry. I've been working in the garage and get all dusty and allergies. Oh man. But, um, anyways... So, I mean, we could talk about all those things, uh, about we need this, we need that, and kind of time for that is kind of gone, you know, and we got the remaining schedule, we've got Patriots, Seattle, the Miami, the Giants twice, the Redskins, and Dallas. Okay, look, we, we could go 10-6, 11-5, I have no doubt about it. We could win this division and win a home playoff game, I believe that. You know, and you get to the playoffs and you got to go play New Orleans or Green Bay and Green Bay, wherever it is, you got to punch your shot. You got a chance. Just get in the playoffs. Okay, I think we can do those kind of things. Um, but, you know, I wish we would have we would have gotten another guy. We would have brought another guy in. Um, we didn't. So the question is, is how do we fix this? How do we move forward with the rest of the year and we take these things that have been negative and turn them into a positive? How do we do it? Uh, it, that's the question because one of the other things that I'm very upset about and been disappointed in has been Mike Grow. I don't think Mike Grow has been. I don't think he's been that good. I don't think he was good last year. He couldn't get Golden Tate going. You see what Golden Tate does for the Giants? Why couldn't we get him to do that for us last year? He didn't know how to scheme him open. He even admitted it. Okay, so I've been disappointed in him. Uh, and you got to remember, he's the offensive coordinator. He puts the plays. He installs the plays. Doug calls the plays. So basically, when you see us right out of the gate come in and struggle, we can't move the ball, or first 15 scripted plays, I think a lot of that falls on Mike Grove. I do. So, you know, he, he hasn't helped matters at all. And I've been disappointed in him. Um, I think the offense is predictable. There's too many times that I basically can tell you what the play is going to be. We sit there in the live streams and we talk about it and we're like, we know this is coming. So if we know it, then you know the defenses know it. Okay, so my thing is this, is we're not going to be able to fix everything during the season. We're going to have to wait a lot, uh, wait for our the end of the year to fix a lot of these things. But in the meantime, there are things we can do to kind of make things better, okay, to kind of get things going. The first thing, I, I think you need to start giving guys like Arthago Whiteside, uh, Greg Ward Jr. They need more chances. They need more opportunities. Uh, we saw Miles Sanders, you know, he's he struggled at times, but at times he makes plays and he's getting better and better because he's playing. Let's give Ortega Whiteside that chance. I know he dropped the ball against Detroit, and, and he didn't see the field much after that, but it's time. It's time, because I know what I get in, in just Nelson and Max Stinkins. We know. 
Jordan Matthews is an upgrade. I'm okay with getting him. Um, you know, he can't hurt. I don't believe he's a, a, a legitimate deep threat, though. Some people try to tell me he is. I don't agree. Okay, I don't agree because I've watched him play enough to know. He, he can do it occasionally, but he's not going to do it enough where the safety is respected all the time. Um, but, you know, one way to get guys open, really, one, well, one way to get guys down the field open is to scheme them open. Okay, the Eagles need to start scheming guys open. They need to start taking advantage of down and distances, which they don't do. And they need to be less predictable on offense. These are all things that they can do to improve this offense, even though you still have basically the same personnel. Okay, because here, here, let me give you an example of what I mean. You have the Chicago Bears game, right, last week. There were like three or four times where the Eagles had like second and two, second and three. One time they had second and inches. It was like the 48-yard line of the Bears. And what do the Eagles do? They run the ball. They run the ball. And second and inches, they run the ball. The Bears were playing it. They clogged up the middle. They they, they they got the, I forget who was carrying the ball, but they stopped them and we didn't even get a first down. We had to go quarterback sneak on third down to get the first down. It was second and inches. That is the moment you have to play action and go long. That's when you have to take advantage of the down and distance. And the Eagles don't do that. And those are the kind of times where you can spring a Max Stinkins open, a Jordan Matthews open, a it's just Nelson open because they're playing that run. They're, they're heavily trying to play that run. Uh, third and goal at the four-yard line. The, the, the Bears were playing past Pass defense, they back everybody up, they rush four. The Eagles are trying, Carson's trying to throw into some tight window with the back of the end zone right there. Instead of just handing off to Jordan Howard, he would have walked in. The Eagles don't take advantage of down distances. Sometimes they're too predictable. You can call play out. I mean, you saw what happened against Buffalo, right? Buffalo, they lined two running backs in the backfield, two tight ends. They they run the play. Buffalo didn't know it was coming. It goes for a touchdown. There's there's too much of the Eagles trying to do the same thing each week. And I will say this. A fair criticism of Carson Wentz. I love him. But a fair criticism is he's got to be able to audible out of some of these plays when he knows it's just bad. He's got to do a better job with that. Because truth is, is some of those plays, you know what it is beforehand. And it's already blown up and they haven't even snapped the ball yet. So the Eagles got to take advantage of that. Okay, they, they got to do a better job on down distances. They got to do better with predictability. And, and you got to stretch the field. You got to, even if you don't catch it, you should be throwing deep at least three times a game. At least three times, take a shot. Because the truth is, is the defenses are basically cheating up. They're cheating up. They put they put best corner on Ertz or they double them. And then they, they bring guys, bring the safeties up for the run. And then they basically say, we dare your outside receivers to beat us. Well, Alshon Jeffrey is hurt. He can't run the same way. You, you can tell. Okay? So the Eagles are in a position where they, that's what they have to do, and they don't even take a chance. you got to take a chance and start trying to go vertical. You're not going to get it every time, but maybe you get it a couple times. And maybe you do it enough that the defenses start to play you honest, and it starts to create more space and open up everything for everybody else. You ever wonder why? I need a drink, sorry. But you ever wonder why every time the Eagles' Carson completes a pass, the guys tackle right away? I mean, they are always on our receivers. Guys are never open to catch and run the ball because they're, they're cheating up. They're playing up. And um, the Eagles just keep running the same routes right in, in where all the traffic is. They refuse to try. The only time the Eagles go vertical is with Nelson Aguilar. Why? Why? You know what I mean? He can't track the ball, but why not give somebody else a try? Why not, why not try to fool him? Don't be so predictable. And to me, that's the number one thing that has to change for the Eagles. And if they do that, if they do that, they'll win this division. They'll win this division. Like I said, get a split in the next two weeks, and then the next five games are all winnable. Um, but, but it has to change. And I'm curious to see what Doug does because I think there will be an adjustment. I hope that uh, Jordan, Howard's, Jordan Matthews can help us. And it's going to be very interesting. So that's kind of how I see the good this season, the bad, and what we have to do to kind of fix it, even though we can't go acquire anybody unless you want to get my man A.B. So with that said, let me know what you guys think. Take care.
Talk to you later. Don't be a dingbat.